What would you like uh, Stephen Harper and, and, and the others who represent the government to start saying about this file? Well, first of all, they need to develop a strategic communications plan that actually works towards a good goal. I mean, right now they just seem to be surviving the day. If they're questioned by Megan Leslie in the House of Commons, they say, oh, you know, we believe in climate change. Please don't attack us. You know, that's a stupid strategy. You're just using the language of your opponents, and that doesn't make any sense at all. So they need a three-step strategy, in my opinion, towards the final goal of being able to talk about climate in a realistic way. I guess their strategists have concluded they can't yet quite do it. So what they need is a three-step step strategy, as I say. I think the first thing they have to do, as I say, is to stop using the language of their opponents. Stop saying things like, for example, climate change is a global problem that requires a global solution. Well, what a stupid statement. If sea level is rising in run, one region, you adapt entirely differently to if it's dropping in another. If there's a drought in one region and a flood in another, you don't have a global solution. You have regional solutions. You look at what's really happening in regions. You stop talking about climate as if it's the same thing as pollution. They keep mixing these two up. Clean Air Act and climate change. You know, they're totally different issues, and they have totally different solutions. In the case of climate change, the solution is to prepare and to help people adapt to climate change because climate always changes. We're doing quite well, though, on the pollution side, so these are totally different issues. So that's step number one. Stop using the language of your opponents, okay? It's just not necessary. Step number two is to say, basically, look, we're not climate experts, you know, the politicians themselves. We don't know who's right, but we do know there's an enormous debate. I mean, there are thousands of references that we talked about earlier that talk about alternative perspectives of climate. So the government should then say, well, we're going to bring in the best scientists from all points of view, re reputable points of view, and we're going to hold open hearings across Canada. We're basically going to try to undo what the Liberals did in 2002. Remember, they I got said... a minute here, Tom, so get to step number three. Step number three Please. is once you've set the stage, okay, and people start to understand what's real, then you have to tell the truth. You actually have to say what is real about climate, and I'll just quote Tim Ball. Here's the kind of thing they hopefully will eventually be able to say. Climate change is all the time, all always has and always will. Current changes are well within natural variability, no matter what activists are saying. And that's the truth. That's what they should focus on working towards. And if they apply those three steps, then what the would happen in 20 seconds or less? Well, the public would start to understand that the climate change field, the science, is just in its very infancy, and that it's going to be decades before we're able to predict, let alone control, climate. So people's interest in the climate issue, you know, they probably would never have to get to step number three because people would start to realize that this is, in fact, grossly exaggerated by most people. But the big takeaway is when you use the ideology of your opponent, your opponent beats you all day I, long. Yeah, right. it, it's, it's a big mistake what they're doing right now, using the language of their opposition. Tom, thank you. That's thank you. Great visit. Three stuffs for messaging for the conservative government, which... We'll be watching this at some point, either live or on YouTube, but they'll get the message.